Hey chemistry students, this is unit 9 in lesson 9.1. We're going to introduce you to my favorite chemistry word, stoichiometry. So our goals for this lesson are to first of all explain what we mean by the term stoichiometry and then to show you how to interpret molar ratios from balanced chemical equations and to solve mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry problems. Let's get to it. All right, so what is stoichiometry exactly? Well, there are Greek origins to the word. The word uh, stoichion, I don't know how you yeah, say that. Is. means element, and metron would be to measure. So you are measuring the elements, so to speak, or the number of elements. So the strict definition of this is stoichiometry is performing calculations that involve quantitative relationships between reactants and products in a balanced chemical equation. So quantitative means we can put numbers on yeah. things and we can use the number of one thing to predict the amount of something else. So no. these are so here's examples of the things we're going to teach you to do with stoichiometry. If we give you a certain amount of reactant, so many grams of this or that, you can use stoichiometry to predict how many grams of product or how many moles of product. And of course also if you're given a desired amount of product you can calculate the amounts of reactants needed. Now we've been doing lesser forms of stoichiometry all year, we've just been calling it conversions up to this point, but conversions and stoichiometry are related. Uh, if you need to pause us to copy down the rest of the slide, pause, otherwise we're moving on. So the heart of stoichiometry is being able to look at a balanced chemical equation and interpret it. So we've written down uh, a chemical equation here. This would be... Uh, butane. Butane. And what kind of reaction, Mr. Hunter? Well, this would be a combustion reaction because we're burning uh, butane in butane, the presence oxygen. of oxygen to form CO2 and water. Okay. Like we said, 98% of combustion reactions are like this. There are the metal combustions as well. But this, on a particle level interpretation. What does this reaction mean to us on a particle level? Well, I would say that it means that there's two molecules of butane, mm -hmm. and then they're going to react with 13 molecules of oxygen, O2 gas, in the combustion reaction, and then we're going to get eight molecules of CO2 and 10 molecules of water. So we can interpret it as molecules. And, you know, a molecule of butane would be four carbon atoms hooked up with 10 uh, hydrogen atoms, but we can also scale that up. These coefficients are relative amounts that apply to any measure of, of amount, so we can interpret that most often. We can do it as dozens, two dozen of these, mm -hmm. react with 13 dozen of these to produce eight dozen and ten dozen. Of course, a dozen is still not a real useful no, quantity in chemistry. which is why we use the mole. So, so two we're going to scale it up yeah, to moles. So two moles of butane plus 13 moles of oxygen will form eight moles of carbon dioxide and ten moles of water. So when we start talking about moles of things, then we have an amount we can actually work with and, and realistically measure in, in a high school chemistry lab. So that's the interpretation. So remember, it, you know, whatever applies at the particle level scales up to any larger yeah. amount, and the mole is the amount of choice. And we will talk about both of these in the on our questions, giving both how many particles of this or how many mo uh, moles of this. So just be ready to see both forms uh, given to you. But let's give you some actual number interpretations of this. Okay, now. let's move on. All right, so here's an actual problem. Uh, we have molar ratios, a.k.a. mole ratios, uh, our quantitative relationships between components of a chemical process. The ratio is determined by the coefficients and subscripts of the balanced equation. So we gave you an equation of phosphorus with oxygen reacting to form diphosphorus pentoxide. Um, so first of all, we can see how many moles there are between each. So between the moles of phosphorus and oxygen, the ratio would be a 4 to 5, because there are 4 phosphoruses for every 5 O2s. We can do the same for phosphorus to diphosphorus pep. Well, pentoxide. So we're going to look at the coefficient on phosphorus. We're going to look at the coefficient on diphosphorus pentoxide. Yeah, so it's four to two. Four phosphoruses for every two diphosphorus pentoxide. And then oxygen to uh, the other would be five to two. Oxygen to P2O5, uh, five, five to two. Those come from the coefficients. So now, it's not much of a stretch mathematically to say, well, okay, so if you start with four moles of phosphorus, 
that equates to needing to react with five moles of oxygen. Or if we start with four moles of phosphorus in this one, that equates to production of two moles of this. So what we do, we're going to replace the ratio sign with an equal sign. Yes. So in other words, the four to five P to O2 ratio here can be rewritten as four moles, moles P equals five moles O2. And, and as long as we are within this chemical process up here of this equation, that's a true relationship. Yep, and we can use that to convert between the two, just like we've been doing all year between grams and particles and liters and whatever else. So it starts with an equivalence, and we build the conversion factors from it, and that's the only really new thing we're adding in this unit that you yeah, haven't yep. already <laughs> done. Even then, it's not all that new yet. But it's not all that new. So we're just going to say, okay, equate the amounts of the molar ratios. Well, let's, let's show you. Next yeah. slide. We'll get to it. So here's another rea oh, it's the same reaction, sorry. Uh, start with a balanced chemical equation. Uh, you're going to have to be able to do balanced chemical equations as well as take them from words to the actual chemical so equation. But in this case, to save time, we're we giving these them. to you. So first off, they want you to calculate from four moles of phosphorus how many moles of O2 we should be able to get. So simply, we're going to set up a conversion factor, either fence post or otherwise. And we know that on the bottom we have to have moles of phosphorus. So we need, that means we're going to put the 4 down there. So the 4 goes here. And we're going to oxygen. The goes yep. Here. So it's 4 times 5. Actually, it's just going to be. The 4s five. are going to divide out, so that's going to work out to 5 moles O2. There you go. So that's pretty easy. We're working with the numbers that are already there. But what if we had a different number of moles of phosphorus? Okay. So, like the second one. Now we have 18 moles of phosphorus, but we want to know how many moles of O2 are needed to react with that. Well, that is the very same setup. Setup. It's 5 moles O2 to 4 moles P. And that equates out to be 22.5. So with sig figs, we're going to write 23. 23 yeah. moles of O2. So, again, it's, it's, we're multiplying the given amount times the mole ratio of 5 fourths. Mm -hmm. All right, now what if we have a smaller amount, like less than 4 moles? We have 0.23 moles phosphorus. How much oxygen is going to react with that? Again, it's 4 moles P to 5 moles O2. And this comes out to be 0 0.29. 0 0.29 moles, moles of O2. Of O2. So now let's say we're starting with a different reactant or a different starting point. Now we're starting with oxygen. Now okay. we have six moles of oxygen. So and six they moles of oxygen. Moles of P2O5. So again, six moles. We have to set up our conversion factor with moles of O2 on the bottom. And we didn't show that in the top, but that's so that that unit Cancels. you want to move away from divides itself out. And so also so the, mol the, so the uh, particle divides out as well. So we're going to mole of P2O5. And the number for that is 2, and of course for O it is 5, coming from the chemical equation. So it's 6 divided by 5 times 2 gives us 2.4, which just goes to 2 using sig figs. All right, last one. Now we have the reactant, 7.4 moles of P2O5. Again, have to set up our conversion. And the question is asking us how many moles of phosphorus do you need to make that much? To get much? there, yeah. In any kind of chemical process, be it industrial or at the high school level, if you're trying to get to a certain end point, you have to be able to calculate backwards to the starting point. So here we go again. Uh, it'll be two moles of P2O5 at the bottom. Two, and then it's, uh, what do we want, phosphorus? Four, Four goes yeah, on phosphorus. the top. So the moles of P2O5 divide away. By two Seven. times four is fourteen point eight, which becomes fifteen moles of phosphorus with sig figs, and that's how we do these calculations. They're that's, pretty straightforward. That's a multiple -mole conversion rate. Yeah. There, they'll get more difficult with the next lesson, but in the meantime, we're sticking with these. All right, so here's our next example problem. Uh, these are some word problems that you're going to have to deal with. 
First, it's how many moles of carbon dioxide are given off when 3.4 moles of butane are completely combusted. So first of all, we have to know what a combustion reaction is, so we know what the other reactant is with butane. So I know in the combustion it's going to be something plus O2, and we're always going to get some CO2s and some H2Os. So we need to figure out what butane's formula is, and we need to balance it. Butane, but. F, F pro but, so it's C4. C4. Again, H10. H10. All right, so we to balance this, we need four CO2s. We need five H2Os. Yeah, five H2Os. Five. Uh-oh. That's going to give us an odd okay. number of oxygen. We'll, we'll deal with it. Five H2Os. So that doesn't give us... It gives us eight plus five, which... Thirteen. Thirteen, so we need six and a half O2s. Yeah, six and a half O2. Six and a half. Or we could double everything if you want to get rid of the fraction. But we'll leave the fraction for now for simplicity's sake. Granted, we're not supposed to do that, but with any diatomic, you can write it as a half yeah. to you balance things out. sometimes see them that way, even yeah. though we tell you you're not supposed yeah. to. Professionals do write it yeah. this way. I've seen it in ExxonMobil written that way. So okay. it's not the end of the world. So let's kind of look at where we're at. We know we have 3.4 moles of butane. So C4H8. Um, C4H10, right? Yeah, H10 okay. was butene. Okay. So now we have to figure out our ratio between butane and... and we want to know how many moles of CO2. CO2. So. so we know it's every one mole. All right, I'll let you write your little thing down there. And the only thing that does get annoying is you have to keep writing the substance, but that's really important now because we're switching between substances, so you need to keep that straight. So our conversion for, or our conversion factor between these two is one mole because the subscript up or the coefficients are the coefficient up there for butane is one. And we're going to CO2, and that one's coefficient is four. So it's CO2. That gives us CO2 at the end, so it's going to be 3.4 times 4 to end up with uh, 14, with correct sig figs, moles of O2, CO2. So again, it's, it's applying the dimensional analysis or the fence post. Cancel the unit you don't want, get it to the unit you do want, and this time the equivalence comes from the balanced chemical equation. All right, so the same equation above, uh, we have... Uh, we want to know how many moles of butane are needed to produce 0.43 moles of water. So what we need is 0 0.43 moles of H2O. Plug in our conversion factor. So again, we know we want moles water down here, and we want to go to moles. That's moles yeah, of that's butane. Good. See. 4H10 up there. So go up to the equation, pick it out. Water has a 5. Butane, 1. So it's going to be that 0.43 divided, divided by 5. You need 0 0.086 moles of butane. That's how these are done. Let's try one last practice problem. So here's a final example. Uh, this is a neutralization reaction. How many moles of sulfuric acid are going to be required to neutralize 0 0.19 moles of sodium hydroxide? So we've already written the equation out and balanced it. So the, the ratio is 1 here, 2, 1, 2. And we know we have 0.19 moles of this. We're trying to figure out how many moles of that. To exactly react, yeah. So here we go with our... So how many moles of H2SO4 do we need to, to neutralize 0 0.19 moles of NaOH, sodium hydroxide? Of course, we need to set up our Is equivalents. So we know at the bottom we need moles of NaOH, and that's going to be two moles of NaOH on the bottom coming from the chemical equation. That's 
that number right there. And then at the top, we need moles of H2SO4, Oops. which we know to be one mole of H2SO4. Again, coming from the chemical equation. There's no number written there, so we know it's a one. So then when we do the math, um, we have 0.19 divided by 2, and that equals 0 0.095. And that's how we neutralize that much sodium hydroxide. That's not it's H. H2SO4. All right. All right, we'll give lots more practice in class, but that's the basics of mole-to-mole uh, -mole stoichiometry conversions. All right, have a good night. All right, chemistry students, so here's the post-video questions for lesson 9.1. So we need you to balance the equation shown below and then answer the three questions. Get that done so we can discuss it the next time in, we meet in class. Until then, I'll see you.